The Crazy Penguin Teaches You Linux. NixNoob.com Welcome to NixNoob. In this video, we're going to talk about KDE activities. And KE activities are a great way to segregate um, system settings based on um, based on the activity you're currently doing. So things like your desktop, your folders on your desktop, widgets, vaults, etc., your start menu, like favorites, your taskbar, can all be configured based on based on activities. Um, and that's a super, super nice feature of KDE um, that if you're, if you're not using KDE, um, I, would, I would argue that, that activities are a good argument for why you might want to check out KDE. Um, so let's, let's get into it. Um, first thing, I'm going to move me out of the way here. And then to get to activities, we want to go to our system settings. So system, system settings, and then it's a little buried under apps and windows here. So activities, click on that. Another way you can get to that is just using KRunner. So just alt space, type in activities. I'm, I've already typed in activities, but activities, and then enter. And so here we are, same, same place. Uh, so default activities, I mean, by default, you're gonna have a default activity. So I'm going to click on that and configure this. As soon as you have more than one activity, you're probably going to want to be able to switch between them with a hotkey. Um, but we can also see some of the settings here, like we can set an icon, we can give it a name, we can choose whether it tracks file and app use. That's for things like your recent document, uh, you know, recent applications. Maybe you don't want it tracking that for a certain app, uh, for a certain activity. Um, you've got automatic turning the screen off. Maybe you want to disable that, um, like you have your system set to automatically turn the screen off after five minutes. Uh, maybe for a certain activity like gaming, you don't want that to do that. Um, you can also change, I believe, your power profile via activity, but we'll we'll check that um, because it does it does kind of integrate itself into the system and in a lot of places. Um, and I um, don't know all of them so we'll we'll look at some things um but the shortcut here i'm gonna click on this and for right now i'm gonna hit meta d which i know is already assigned uh basically that shows my whole desktop if i have a bunch of things on top of it um so i don't want to overwrite that i just wanted to show you that if you put something that's already assigned it's going to warn you about it so cancel i'm going to click back here and do meta alt d for default activity and it took that, it's not yelling at me, so I'll just go ahead and save that. That takes us back to our activities. So now I'm gonna create a new activity and I'm gonna call this bills, uh, paying bills. And then I'm gonna select an icon. I'm gonna choose a calculator and this is searchable. You can also set, you know, whether it's all your icons or just a certain icon, but we can search for calculator. There you go. We got a couple different calculator icons. I'm just going to use this KCAL icon. And then I'm going to let it track everything. Um, and then for the, the shortcut, I'm going to do meta alt B for bill pay and then save. And so that's it. Uh, one thing I should mention there, uh, if I hit alt spacebar and go back to activities, there is a help down here. If you click on this, it's going to tell you a lot more about activities and what you can do with it. Um, just gives you a nice, nice description about what what everything is and how to edit it and what you know a little bit about what you can do with it. Um, so read that if you're interested in in activities. I might not. I might miss something that's in there in this video. Um, as usual, I will probably be a little all over the place because activities are awesome, but there's kind of a lot to them. Um, so now that we've got this set, or now that we've created an activity, I can right click and go to show activity switcher and switch to the activity like that. That will be, there we go. Okay. So you can see the only thing that changes there between default and, uh, the bill pay is that that one desktop icon goes away. So let's, let's change this. I'm going to go desktop and wallpaper, and I'm just going to choose something. There we go, apply. So now if I switch to my default, that's the default desktop, bill pay has the 
the green, you know, leave desktop. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to let's put a widget on our desktop. Let's say for for bill pay, we want to have a um, a calculator widget on our desktop. So I'm going to go to my uh, display configuration. Um, actually enter edit mode, click on widgets, and I'm just going to look for a calculator. There we go, and I'm going to drag that over here, and let's also put a calendar maybe. Alrighty, so now we've got a calendar on our desktop and a, uh, and a calculator. I'm going to exit edit mode there. Now if I uh, switch control D, Default desktop, bill pay desktop. We've got a calculator. Um, so that's super nice. Um, also, any folders we have open would stay open. So I'm just going to make a new folder. Uh, create, uh, create new folder. I'm just going to call it temp. And then I'm going to put a folder in there called bills. And I'm just putting that in... Um, putting it in a temp folder because I'm going to delete all this. Otherwise, I would just make a folder on my desktop. So I'm going to put that build folder on my desktop. Just link here. Oh, I did not mean to copy it there. Move to trash. Link here. All right. So now we've got a temp folder and a bills folder on our desktop. And... Um, if I control all default, you can see that that's not on my default desktop. Okay, back to bill pay. So we've got a bill folder here. I'm gonna open that up. If I switch, it's gone. And then your your virtual desktop still work the same. So I, but you can see it's keeping my widgets and my desktop and my folders. So now I've got multiple desktops. Um, so I can switch between which apps I have open, but I'm still in my my bill pay activity. Um, okay, so let's let's do some more stuff here. I'm gonna go to my start menu and just do. Um, I'm gonna search for let's see KCalc, and I'm going to sure add that to my desktop. I'm gonna pin that to my my task manager. We could also just drag and drop that to our task manager here. So I just drag and drop. Drag and drop this to my task manager. All right, and then I'm going to also add that to my favorites. So show in favorites. Now you can see in favorites here that I have new options. When I go to show in favorites, I can say all activities on the current activity or bills or default. And so default is my default activity. So even though I'm in the bills activity, I could pin an application to the default activity taskbar if I wanted to. Um, I'm going to just say current activity, same as sec selecting bills. Now that that's selected, if I right click on it and say show in uh, favorites, you can see that it's selected bills there. Let's put another calculator. I'll do um, speed crunch, speed crunch, and I will pin that to show in favorites for the current activity. And I will also pin to my taskbar. And I will also add that to my desktop. There we go. So now in our taskbar here, we can right click and say pin to task manager and we can say current activity only. It's, I'm gonna do the same one for this one, current activity only. Okay, so now we've got two calculators here. Speed crunch is just one that is kind of like a running total. Um, let's go edit uh, clear session clear history. So if I did like 5 plus 5, enter, that's 10 plus 12, you know, plus 456 or 53 plus 500 or 659. Um, you get the idea. Um, and I can zoom in on this for you. It's just a running running calculator that gives you totals. It also allows you to set variables and does does a lot of other stuff. And it can do it can do graphing and stuff as well. Um, so it's a it's a nice cal a calculator that I like I like a lot. That's called Speed Crunch. 
Um, we also have KCAL. KCAL can do a lot of what SpeedCrunch, oh, I meant to leave that open. Let's just leave that open. And let's switch to a different desktop here and open SpeedCrunch, I mean uh, KCAL. So KCAL, kind of the same thing. 96 uh, plus 87 plus 58 plus. Um, so you, it's not keeping the history right now, but we can go into our settings and say, um, oh, show history. It should be showing my history settings. Show history. Uh, am I just not big enough? Why are you not showing me my histories? Let's go plus. There we go. Uh, plus, it's because I had done it all in one in one thing. But there we go. Now it's showing the history. So this kind of does the same thing. It also has a bunch of settings like science mode and and statistics mode, etc. It's also a nice nice calculator. And this one's built into KDE. So this one, um, being KDE, uh, KDE app would also run on like Mac, Windows, etc. Okay, so I'm going to leave that open and just go back to my default activity. And you can see all that went away. Looking at my desktops, I don't have anything open. Let's go back to our pay bills. Look at that. Our desktop has that on it, or our KCALC. We switched to our other virtual desktop, and we still have all our stuff open, which is, which is super fantastic. So you can see how this could be useful to uh, manage, you know, what tasks you have in your taskbar, what tasks you have in your start menu. Um, other things you could do is like vaults. So I'm going to come create a new vault, which is probably what I would do for paying bills. For paying bills, I wouldn't want that to be something that, you know, anyone could have access to. I would want to keep, keep my bill information in a protected vault. So I can say create new vault. I'm just going to call it bills and say next, I'm gonna keep the default, the default crypto backend. I'm gonna just type in test as the password. Whoops. Here, I'm just gonna make it bills and verify bills and go next. And that's good, next. And yep, default cipher. Um, with vaults, you can also have it automatically go all offline when a vault is, uh, when a vault is opened, which is a nice feature if you've got really, really secret information that you want to make sure you're offline anytime you access that, you can put it in an encrypted vault and set the setting for that vault to automatically disable networking and Bluetooth, which is super cool. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm not going to do that for this. Um, so now we have a vault that we can open, and since I just created it, it's already open. But if we, if we lock that vault and go to its settings, uh, configure vault, under advanced uh, limit to selected activities, and I can say bills, say OK. So now um, if I switch to my default activity and we go look at our vaults here, I don't have any vaults. That doesn't even show up. But if I switch to my bill pay activity, and go to my vaults. There it is, unlock and open. And what did I do? I did bills. There we go. Create new text file. Test. This is super secret. And save that. So now we have a super secret text file that is only available from my bill pay activity. I'm going to come back to my vault here and just lock that vault. Okay, um, so that super cool that our activities, uh, you know, uh, activities can make it where a vault shows up or doesn't show up. Um, I think that's pretty much it to give you an overview of kind of what activities are and what they do and how fast that makes it to switch back between different different modes of working like I'm paying bills, I'm not paying bills, but for gaming, etc. Let's take a look at the power settings and see if that is per activity. Okay, so it turns out that um, in the version of KDE that I am using, um, you can't set a power profile per activity, but that 
that is something that is in the latest KDE. All the documentation I can find says that that is a feature that is available. Um, so if you're running the latest KDE, you should be able to set a power profile per activity so that if you're gaming, you can set you know, your power profile to like 100% or a performance mode, um, which, is, which is a super nice feature. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to KDE activities. Um, if you did, please give me a thumbs up, uh, a like, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future content. And thanks for watching.